Well, if you put Rams in the middle, I think he's an impeccable. He's a, he's an awesome player, but I don't think he can do nearly as well as no one, just mm -hmm. like skill wise. Whereas then you have uh, Secret, you have Nisha mid one. They're both really good at the mid lane, so they can pretty much be act as a, they can just interchange between between the two of them. And I think a lot of teams can't do that. Virtus pros turn to ban. Obviously gives you an advantage if you can. TNC predators I mean, Gabby, you know, he... I mean, what can you do as a PA, honestly? Like, it's, it's hard to a, judge. That's yeah. the thing, it's, it's not the best mid matchup. Um, that's the hero. I guess they just thought the Timbersaw having a good start was going to be more important than the, the PA, but... PA got sent mid. And I think they knew PA was going to have a rough time, because that's why the Magnus kept coming in, trying to get these hero plays off, but... It, it wasn't a first easy one was place. good. Yeah, first score yeah. gank was good. Yeah, the, the, the ones kill. after that felt kind of forced and not so great. Yeah. yeah, at some point PA needed to find a new lane, but then it was like, well, who's going to actually go mid and deal Five with this bug? I mean, it was just such a great last pick. They banned Husker instead. I don't know if Husker would have given them more problems than the PA, but uh, the, the Pugna. But yeah. it seems like not banning Pugna kind of. I, I thought they banned Husker to set up the timber mid, and then Pugna is of course not a great matchup for timber, but he still free farms there. And it's better than sacrificing your PA, I think. Yep. Now, before even getting into that second game, one of the big things that kind of agreed upon on the panel was the idea that it really was on VP, right? It was on VP tightening up, making sure that they actually played their game. That was how they were going to be able to win. We, we talked about the performance that TNC did have in the first map. Of course, they do have a very strong performance in that first game. But it was on VP. Now, when VP is Ten performing, what can TNC do to really shake this up and take this entire series? Well, for starters, remaining. they could take IO here, which is not banned. They banned Lich themselves. I think Are Tim, they Tim's, an IO team? Tim Tim's plays a really good IO. Does, yeah. I mean, I've also still asked the question, how good is IO? I'm not convinced it's like this mm. super OP hero anymore like it used to be. But teams, it's, they're just so much accustomed to not playing against IO. If you suddenly have to play against it again, it's like it's kind a of like a bait, factor. right? You bait yourself. Yeah, yeah. Or even it's it's like you don't play against a brood for a while, and it comes out, and it's like you for, just forget how this hero works. So. Yeah. Do, do you feel kind of the same way that that Black does? A little bit earlier today, he mentioned w with this hero in particular, it is one of those things you where if you do have somebody on your team who is used to playing it, maybe it does still have that level of strength that people expect it to have. Um, I'm. We'll find out maybe because VPs picked it up here. I. I I, it forces you down a certain road where you have to get this really strong IO partner, this hero that can benefit from the Aghanim's upgrade with the Tether, so in this case a Luna, in other games you usually see the Gyrocopter. Uh, I, I think it forces your draft down a certain way, but then it also changes how your opponents have to play. You know, you can't be playing alone on the map when IO can relocate in, so it does change the game entirely. I mean, VP definitely expected them to not pick the IO, because they instantly picked it when they responded with the Magnus. Yeah. And then of course Luna is... Interesting. Usually it's a gyro. Luna is much more, uh, much weaker in the laning phase, but much stronger when it comes to mid late game. So it's more like a, like an investment, I guess you could say. They must just not feel like gyro is good anymore. I mean, I mean, he's really not. But usually with an IO, he's still quite strong. Now, of course, we see the TB pick up against the Luna, one of the best refraction targets in the entire game. Yeah. And, and actually, and, a decent mag partner. Yeah, yeah, you're not getting in power cleave and metamorph, but when you're farming, jungling, yeah. You, Use that in power pretty well. I mean, just being empowered in range from adds to, like another hundred damage, minute twenty. It's ridiculous how hard you hit, and it's definitely a good combo. You can always catch up if you have a bad early game as well. So, one of I, the best partners. I do want to go back to you, kind of mentioning with Luna the investment. You like the investment? I don't know. Luna is like Luna. I or the lane is not good. You, you don't. Sure, yeah. You have they, nothing pretty much. I mean, do you even want to maybe lane I or offline with someone else and put? Give Luna a different support. I think that's almost like the better option because Io Luna, you put two strong heroes against it, they will not farm. And Io, uh, this Luna will have a very hard time. And then Io that loses early game is not very scary at all. It needs yeah. to be tanky, it needs to have a good lane. And they are, you do have to invest in this. You can't have Luna, you know, not having a good game. Yeah. You're picking this hero to be your main farmer and carry this game for you. I think I would like something like a Bane with it to secure the lane. Iron not... Bane's always been like kind of a classic support Five UI. Seconds, yeah, really? you can set up the ganks with yeah. Reduka very easily. They, Bane makes up for Iron's weaknesses, the lack of lockdown, the, the lack of control, so... And it would make sense too, because of the new Luna Aura, of course, gives like... main attribute instead of bonus damage. Yep. So it would be very good for Bane, he can like infinitely brain sap. So, so that's kind of the route you feel like they're forced down though? When they actually get to Bex, are, are they forced to look for something to make up for those, those little things that are missing now? 
Yeah, they're going to need some good stuns control. Sven that is a good one. the alternative, I think, as a support. We saw Solo play it earlier today as a five, I think. Um, Sven Luna. I don't know about if that's... Maybe they try one. That's the other option. That doesn't sound amazing, but we're seeing a lot of these 1v1 side lane matchups. As you, TNC get yeah. the Dazzle now, Dazzle TV very strong. You can definitely abuse that mag matchup. Magnus 1v1 is not very good. You, you put the, like a tight hunter against it, and you go aggro with these three heroes is definitely a possibility, and the TB will suffer from that for sure. And if Mag's a four, then you you know your your tri lane is gonna remain. crush the other team. Like they yeah. can't really tri lane with a four position magnet. That's the biggest weakness of Magnus, oh, honestly. Your lanes just become so weak, so predictable yeah. that it's very easy to just that's, abuse that. That's why I think there's actually few teams who are still first picking Magnet. It mm -hmm. seems like the hero actually fell off quite a bit over the you know post seven point two zero patches because he got some small nerfs and people just understood. Wait, this hero kind of Ducks in the lane, you can completely take advantage of it. Yeah. Like a lot of the better teams, they pick Mac in the second phase, if at all, if mm. they identify the weak lanes of the opponents already. Or just first picking it like this leaves you very, uh, leaves you very vulnerable to a lot of aggression. You think you're just going to go back for our oh, Titan that's banned, actually? That's, I like that yeah. adjustment. They've been mm. relying and going back to that tide way too much throughout the I, I think today. Centaur is a good replacement. Slada, even Slada 1 versus 1 against the melee hero is. Super good. DNC predators turn to Underlord. Underlord, yeah, Underlord yeah. of course. I was course, thinking more yeah. like what's going to do with the TB. Because the Centaur to me doesn't. Yeah, you can get the Crimson Guard and all that. Instant OD pick. Uh, OD is a hard counter to Underlord. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, Pretty good against Luna as well. Gives you a good save with the Astral. I mean, you've got both Grave as well as Astral now. There's a lot of defensive playmaking capabilities here. So. Atna Band as well. One of the better counters. Yeah. It is the third game in a row. We see VP with that final pick, and they're looking to give no one that Ten good mid matchup. I mean, they didn't in game one in the end, which was kind of weird because they picked him the hero, but didn't send him mid. And then dodged it, yeah. You got to imagine he's looking for something favorable. But now we're looking for an aggro tri lane, a safe lane underlord, most likely. Yeah, and underlord then... 1v1. He can crush a 1v1 against Magnet. Though. Yeah, but I feel like TNC will also want to avoid the lane. So I think getting the right lanes is very important for VP this game in yeah. particular. What do, you, what do you run against the OD? It's, sniper it's, used to be one of the counters. But Sniper Luna, it can work. I think it's not Ten too greedy here. Remains. Yeah, it can work. This is, you're, you're versing a Magnus. It's a slow paced game, you know. You, huh. you see that other, the other side and you're like, okay. They have gonna... no one to reach. What's that? Uh, they have no one to reach a Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sniper versus TB is not like amazing, but you get, you get enough farm. You can maybe, you, you're going to look towards like your Luna with her Ags Eclipse. Um, to maybe, and your Underlord to kind of mitigate the TB's damage. If not Sniper. They ban it, so it's, yeah, yeah. that's taken out of the picture. So, oh, Snipers. But first, TNC. What do they need? They need a position for Tim's hero. I don't want to see him on a Magnus again. They actually need him to move around and create yep. some space. And it's Rubik, Rubik, Tiny, Earth Spirit. Those three banned, which means... Ten seconds it's going to be... Again, yeah, like the, the position for Ayo. pool is so limited at yeah. this point. Seconds remaining. I feel like they should have almost been prioritizing his picks more in the draft because it feels yeah. like this is two games in a row now where they get to these, this last pick and it's like, well... Ims does not have much left to play in his, you know, his comfort zone. Picking Mag three times in a row seems... They didn't adjust at all. They just came in with this, like, it was like one idea. And... Yeah. Maybe, you know, it works on game and you're just like, well, let's keep sticking to it. I mean, we spoke about it. It's probably also the most comfortable that you can get with a player you're, you're not with... so used to. Yeah, you're playing with a stand and you had maybe a couple days to practice, as the team said, so they feel like they just have to stick with a few different options. Shadow Demon. Alright. I mean, it's good against Luna. Yeah. Tinker. I think this makes uh, sense. Tinker, yeah. Ooh. I was they gonna, get a TB counter and... Yeah, I, I was gonna mention it, but I thought Tinker is way too greedy. Yeah, we haven't seen much Tinker yeah. at all. It's a Tinker you, Luna is very greedy. And usually not from a team like VP. They, mm. they haven't really gone for this Tinker all too much. But of course, no one is in a very good Tinker. Like his, his mechanical ability on the hero. No is one's very a good. very good, you know, 20 different heroes. Yeah, put him whatever, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to really say there's many heroes that he's not going to shine on. But a Tinker can demolish this game. Do you if think the, the lane is good for him too against the OD? That's... The new one, honestly, nobody plays Tinker anymore. So I haven't actually experienced the lane. Okay. But I think on paper it should still be okay. Like you're probably just going to trade farm. Because he can't really be aggro on you. You just laser him if he banishes you and... I think they're both just gonna farm, and then okay. yeah, Tinker, if he gets a good game, he can carry this game easily. Like, Wait, did TNC last pick again? 
Uh, Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon, okay. Yeah. So they still don't have sense. good ways to, yeah, they don't have good ways to catch the Tinker at all, really, yeah. with their draft. And we spoke about how Sniper, there's a lack of reach for him. Tinker is even worse. Yeah. Like, Same. he's just gonna blink around. There's some questions, but also a lot of potential with Tinker, but I, I do want to go back to the Magnus. Do you feel like the reason that we keep seeing it is because of something that you guys kind of alluded to, but really we haven't talked about since the first game in the series, and that is going to be the stand-in for TNC. Do you think this is their way of saying, okay, we have a stand-in, this is just the best way to play on and try to feel the most comfortable with somebody that we're not nearly as used to, gods? Yeah, it feels like it. They're going to at least, until it, if it fails them too much, they may look a different direction. But for right now, you you took a game off VP, one of the best teams in the world. Try it again. Yeah, and also right now, it's it's not necessarily down to the wire. You're, you're in a pretty good position here. If you're able to take this next game, you already know that you're going to have one of the best places that you could have in Group A. And we're going to figure that out right now. We are going to figure out who the top dog in Group A is going to be. We got Kyle and Toby waiting by. Let's kick off the action. Yeah, TNC have already improved themselves really well. They're looking to keep going as Tim's is going to get us straight into the action with disruption already over on Solo. A very difficult hero to kill off, however. The Sven just continues to run back towards the town. They'll banish him up again. No one. Laser is available. Solo is still alive. And with the rest of Virtus Pro behind him, they'll start to disengage. This can give us a little bit of time to have a chat. How do you like... Oh, actually, does it? Ramsey's... They don't have a stun. Tim's is fine. Is he? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's, if, if things get rough, he can always disrupt. Um, I, I really like the VP draft, if that's what you're going to ask. That's that's what I'm looking for. Because like, it seems like got so much sustain, such great global presence as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't feel as greedy as I think the panel was kind of yeah, saying, saying it was. It just fits the way VP wants to play. Ramses is on a hyper carry. you got a ton of global mobility. You've got just really good lanes. And Ooh, this you is had... Fun. Oh? Yeah, so Gabby waited and rotated around the back. He used the reflect to slow down Roger and Ramses. Mm. So this way they could ensure they get the two runes. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, uh, Riol got both the runes on the offlane. So TNC will claim all four runes That's good. Uh, at the start of the game. Yeah, I just yet to address the OD. I have not seen this hero lose a game at the tournament at least 4-0. And Tinker is a counter. You, you need the BKB and a Shiva now on RML if you really want to find this Tinker and kill him. You can still snowball and certainly win the game, but oh, no. it, it just feels like VP, if they get ahead, that lead is just going to grow exponentially, and it'll be a very quick game. But. They're already lane switching, so even though you get all four runes, uh, Sven's going to find out the fact that Riora is only now just making his way up towards the top lane. Tim's was soaking up the bottom lane farm. And they can do this kind of nice, easy combination, like disrupt into, into Shadow Wave harassment damage, but it, it's, it's against an Underlord. Yeah. And now even Sven's going to arrive. Stormbolt, bring down the Hellfire. Tim's got hit at least once by the Underlord. The Underlord loves laning against Terrorblade, though. You have 50 damage on the TB trying to last hit. Pasha sitting at 72 with just one stack of the Atrophy Aura. But TNC willingly put this lane in. Like, they, they moved Gabby down. They wanted to walk him in for this. What's... And then on bottom lane, Pasha, they're going to keep on harassing into the tree line. That's the reason why Solo is here to lend aid. It's just an impossible lane for Magnus. If You just can't try lane a Magnus, right? You want to give Gabby a game, so yeah, it's tough. An Underlord doesn't mind this, but at least you ensure your Terror Blade's gonna have some nice farm. Top lane, though, I just fear for Rior. I don't want to see him have a repeat of that last game where he just was a complete non-factor after getting crushed in the laning phase. But at least as a mag, you can pull creeps a lot easier than a uh, than a no boots bat rider. Roger's still gonna try and make him work for it. Try and make him burn the salve if possible. Meanwhile, Ramsey can just drag the die creep wave over. They did use a uh, sentry ward to block the pull, so it's not easy for the radiant side just to get more. Bottom lane, storm bolts are out. Pasha's still trying to get back underneath the tower. They're gonna hide inside the fog of war, but it's just not possible for him. The Underlord will fall. Solo, one storm bolt only can really lend to help out his teammate. Bear in mind the change to the soul catcher on Shadow Demon no longer increases the damage taken, but it does immediately deal damage equal to percentage of your current health. That's very effective against somebody like an Underlord. Especially if you want to try and buff that up, right? Mm. Yeah. 
But the other lane I want to keep my, my eye pretty closely on is that Tinker lane. How fast does no one start to move up in items? Again, they just keep going on bottom. Never ends. Stormbolt out over on the Terra Blade. They've got Ninja Boogie behind him with a Shadow Wave to get the extra life. To keep the push going against Pasha. Tim's will be the one to find the kill. It's the second time in two games where they've done a really good job of that. You punish the teleport back. It's fine to die as the offlane underlord, well, safe lane underlord, but technically. It's just when you die after teleporting, you have to do this walk of shame. You're a slow hero, and he might actually just go to the jungle. He's level three, two points, Firestorm, and bottom lane just seems what solo Solo misses zero, zero, 01 in his CS. Level two needs to now go up against a Terra Blade. That doesn't sound like a fun time. Yeah, you're just trying to leech some experience. It's certainly not fun. The counter out is, however, the fact the looter is getting some really good farm. Obviously, Terra Blade is getting the same type of thing, so is the OD in mid. But it's kind of like, if you look at the top three cores, it's pretty balanced across the board as far as the CS goes. Yeah. Now, the mid lane, though, that's the one to watch. It's, it's, it's incredibly even. Slightly more denies on Armel, but who rotates mid first is going to be the question. You have double banish bear in mind this entire game for TNC and a grave. This is something I remember EG doing against us in a scrim way back before TI5. You have this so much save. Double banish and grave. Like In a team fight, you can theoretically crazy outplay VP. <laughs> By just removing a hero the entire time. Solo's in trouble, disrupted up, poisoned, and the body block of the SD Illusions just staying in front of Solo, and they have enough damage to get the kill. Pasha trying to send his own ground and fight. Uh, he does really minimal damage. Tims has the confidence just to stand his own ground again and fight back. It's just five minutes in, they want to stall him up. So as many of the runes go the way of TNC as possible, and VP will claim both of the top runes in the hands of Roger. The really weird meta that's changed. Like we did not really see this at the minor very much, but now every single game it feels like you just have both carries free farming the enemy safe lane. Mid relatively even, and then the supports kind of just run around in circles. You look at this, Shadow Demon Dazzle, they will yep. find Solo once again. Yep, they got a four man shadow wave, that's why Solo's so low on his life. He's able to pop his war cry. Then that shield do some work. He's got four stick charges up his sleeve too. And not to mention Roger. TPing over with bottle charges available. They try efficiently to salve up Sven. That's so far so good for TNC. And see how this goes. I'm really curious to see this Tinker OD relationship plays out as the game progresses. Same with TB Luna. I, I see Terrorblade is a pretty good counter pick to the Luna, but the thing about that hero is you up put so much damage, especially if Wisp hits level 15, you get that Ags Luna ultimate. If TB doesn't have a BKB, he might just feed to your ult alone. How Bo Boogie's trying to look for that nice poison touch area. And they're gonna find it anyway if ST moves over. Just a disruption not even required. Gabby, okay, maybe it is required. They should have had enough damage to easily kill off Harsha. Now they'll have to die monthly for tier one tower to find the Underlord as Ninja Boogie tanks that tower. Gets the poison touch off mid lane. No one gets the solo kill onto Armel. And Pasha oh. looking for a rebuttal onto Ninja Boogie. The Hellfire will not be enough to get the kill. What a solo kill oh, mid. Tim, from where are you going? Going very, very deep. Catcher is out. They'll turn on the reflex. Solo. Looking for a fight of his own. Seven stick charges available. This will give him the storm bolts. Now combo with Ramsey's. One more loose and beam, and Gabby will fall. And that's exactly what happens. Solo gets the last hit in. Really good TP there from the Luna. Ramsey's just getting effective. Up. Not only does he get that kill, but also a tower deny, assuming he's able to last hit this properly. He wasn't. <laughs> I jinxed him. He attacked, the catapult attacked, and that was all I had to say about that. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like a slower game will favor the side of VP. However, you do have a timing on the side of TNC. If you get, you know, BKB on the Terror Blade after his Manta, something like that, you can just win a fight and just go high ground because he's going to output so much damage. It's a really tough game to read. It's kind of hard to go high ground against this, though. Like, 
Yeah. You can always just leave Lunar on the front lines who can be sustained by the eye, but it's, it's the mass march of the machines, it's the mischances that will come in from laser. It's just that never ending Tinker spam that's very problematic. I suppose they got some decent sustain, but Tim's is not one of those players who has sustain. Roger and Ramsey's combined together to kill him underneath his own tier one tower. Sustain comes from heroes like Dazzle. You know, and just farming the jungle, trying to stay efficient. Got a really lucky camp. Only Tinker can really only farm the magic, not resistant creeps. Solo, he's just walking into the middle of Armel, Gabby, and Ninja Boogie. They didn't have all the vision in the world to know this, but most of the heroes walk past that mid tower. Solo gets the war cry off as uh, no one arrives for defense duty. And they got the glyph up as well, and this is the downside of playing into a Tinker as a Terror Blade. It is incredibly difficult to push in, as you said. No one just spams out a couple marches, all of a sudden the creep wave's dead. And the meta is now going to have to be used for farming. Definitely not what Gabby wants. He wants to be taking towers with this. Yeah. This is like the new Dota too. Like up top, you just have Mag versus Underlord constantly shoving waves into each other. It's like every team drafts and plays around this concept of heavy pressure. And sometimes you just get stalemates in what feels like every lane. That's what we have here. It's just, just lanes being shoved. Yep. And being... You just wait. Just wait to see just how much of a reply any team wants to do. We, we saw it earlier today with e -Harm just TPing in all five heroes. It's like, no, you're not going to take our towers. You're going to play very much like Wings did. But for now, it's a little bit more of a different story. VP are going to smoke up. They smoked up on top of the Dire Observer Ward, so they should be aware of that. That's actually a very odd scan position. It's over on the Radiant side of the river, where Tim's is now walking out to. So they must be looking for the bounty runes. And Tim's... Oh, Spirit's going to be able to connect onto him, so he'll die. BP not getting the fight they were looking for, but they'll still claim both bottom bounty runes. No one does finish up his bots. Three gold away, he's going to do the walk back to base, and then he'll be free to port out anywhere he wants. And this is where the VP lineup starts to accelerate. And if you're the side of TNC, you got to think about towers, and you got to think about what timing are you looking to win this game because right now vp is going to be very content just shoving lanes and farming in all directions like yep there's nothing you can do if you're tnc unless you're able to find some kills first especially because you got this now with the bts up from Tinker, it's too easy to just relocate in and have this global presence across the map for virtus pro ramses doesn't have any kind of points up in the eclipse so he's got to do this the old-fashioned way but that's why i've got tinker rockets flying long and far and we didn't even comment on that. Wisp will die in the bottom lane, but yep. check out oh, Luna's... Wait, Willie. Whoa! Willie, tether down, begins his TP, and there will be a banishment. Tinker, started his TP in, faking the RP out from the Magnus. And Io, this time around, nothing to tether over to, and he will not survive. Check out the Luna skill build up top as he's pushing. A 1-3-4 build. Yep. And remember, that gives bonus primary attributes now, and he's playing on a team with three strength heroes. They all, like, look at the health on Underlord and Sven. <laughs> Sven has brown boots and 1,500 HP. He's level four. Yep. Nothing like it, man. When you when you combine it with the Warcry too, the attack speed increases. You've got Mask of Madness already completed over on Ramses. Io just rejoins this fight, and then all of a sudden, the Luna's just wrecking apart everything. That's why it kind of feels like Luna is just going to destroy any kind of army that TB wants to create. Now, Pasha begins the Uber route. Solar wants to stay with him. The banishment is out. Does Pasha get to take him with him? And yep, together, they will retreat back home, forcing multiple TPs out from TNC, not to mention the use of Sani's Eclipse. I love what offlane's become in this new patch as well. It's pretty much just a race to Vlad's, unless you're Magnus. Because you don't need to buy Vlad's, because you have him power. But Pasha just pretty much ground boots Vlad's, no matter the hero. Constantly farm waves and then find your carries, make them better. And, and this build on Luna, yeah, it's a bit greedy, but if you get away with it, you farm so fast yep. with this Max, Moonglaive, and Aura style. The points in beam are effectively useless if you're not casting them on enemy heroes. Meanwhile, OD picks up a Midas, but this is a lot later than the one we saw in that E-Home game, a full three minutes almost, and I don't know if you're really 
capable of getting away with it it's this the time. It's the TNC wraparound. Tims has the double damage room for some reason, but the double storm bomb from Sven. Solo creating more space. Gabby did, however, get that metamorphosis off. He doesn't finish Roger. Okay, the poison touch from Ninja Boogie will finish Roger off instead. And this strands out ramp. Oh, oh what the RP! We all are able to grab both of them. Roger keeping the tether up. He bought back to keep Ramsey's alive. And that's why they just turn on the mask of madness and the overpower. Every bit of damage you've got. Find him in the trees. Ninja Boogie TP out. Cancelled by the loser. Mm. Even Ramsey, even after he was pulled out, the Glaives finish off the battle. Four heroes down from TNC. The buyback from Ayer kept them in it. What a bounce. That's the definition of perfect right there because that was the last little touch of damage. And it means that Ramses gets solo XP off the kills because he's not in range when they actually pick them up. So great job by him. And really, kudos to Roger, though. That's a critical buyback. I'm pretty sure Luna and Tinker are dead there if he doesn't save the, uh, the Ramses. Ramsey gets so much money from this. Of course, you do see how it can turn around, Tim's. You get a disruption off and uh, on Luna, and all of a sudden you do probably more damage than the rest of his team currently does. Yep. That's a good point. One of the reasons they last picked this hero. A bit unconventional, but TNC proving, you know, they don't... Uh, we've seen a lot of weird picks thus far in this tournament. I saw Chaos win a game with a Wind Ranger Naga. Yeah. Not surprised to see Shadow Demon back if Luna's going to be picked this early. Nothing is ever very clear when it comes to starting up. Like, something that's as important as the Major. Yeah. There's always this own meta that, that starts to form up. Teams have specific concepts. Hey, who knows? Maybe we see the Wyvern and an Axe concept. That that. Some, some people may have created in this casting duo. Uh, <laughs> so, that was... It ain't me. They, they baited the scan. VP saw the TNC scanned and waited with that smoke play. Counted to 15 and then immediately they're into the pit. They're doing, they're doing this pretty quickly. TNC unable to push the other lanes in fast enough. Middle, bottom, top, everything's going in a lot, like, pretty fast. And Solo is still able to claim both of the bounty runes from yep. top. So, Virtus Pro loses out on nothing. They get the Aegis Immortal into the hands of the Luna, who's looking for her own fight. OD's gonna show herself, Roger? Does he want to get involved in this? What's coming in on the Courier? You've got uh, the drums now, completed for Armel. Ah, uh, but... It's just not a game, an item that's going to change the status quo here. I'm a bit concerned for TNC. That's a really great tink of ward though. TNC, oh the RP! It didn't actually catch yet the Luna, so they turn on the Eclipse. Roger's nearby, and no one. He's TP'd over to the creep wave, into the trees. You've got rockets flying forward. Rior gets hit by that pretty hard, not to mention the laser. Bouncing into Terra Blade. So Gabby doesn't find the hit he's looking for. In fact, he's going to get Storm bolted up and Solo with a God Strength. The Root tries to create a little bit more space from the Underlord and is able to buy just enough time with Ninja Boogie Shell of Grave to get Gabby Sunder off. I don't think Solo is totally done with this. At least I don't want to be done with this. But they may have to with IO dead. You're okay with that if you're VP. Not ideal, but you could have... If Ramses doesn't make that quick little shift to the left and juke that double RP, they're going to lose that Aegis as well. Uh, no one up with the Blink Dagger now. Aetherlands next, and you're well positioned as VP to just clear out this tier 2 bottom tower. And well, Pasha, I love it, because he actually went for the medallion right after Vlad's too, so... Certainly keying in on a way to itemize, and I don't blame him after Seb and Trusight proved just how important itemization was. Well, this push can keep going on bottom lane with the Vlads, the Vip Booster, and the Medallion. Anyone comes too close to Virtus Pro lineup and they're probably gonna pop. Io's already rejoining the fight, tickets a little bit further away. Interesting Observer will be put down, and once again, okay, they're gonna try and fight with the Luna Illusions, but it won't work. VP very quick to clean up. The Disruption Illusions, and they can't afford to lose the tower. If the tower goes down, these Glaives will make it impossible for the supports to stay in close. That's why Tim's is over in the tree line, so he's he's sort of close enough to be involved in the fight. But here comes the Glaive Bouncers. How do you even blink in? Magnus had to fall back almost to his tier 4 towers so in order to have this Blink Dagger off cooldown. And yeah, VP, they just take the racks. No one wants to come closer. Tim's. He'll come in, he'll get the purge over on the Luna, but that's where the pick comes down. Tim's very quickly dead. The buyback is out, but the bottom rack is totally taken. Oh, the wrap around, wrap around from the rear. Dazzle as well as OD looking for a target, but now they realize the Observer Ward was already there. They de-warded even though the rockets are flying forward. 
And Voters Pro haven't found the target they want just yet. Watch just got tether away targets, and it will be the Luna. And they find their, their one target in the back line is Dazzle. Shallow Grave will come out, but these mass rockets from Tinker, they're so far forward. Dazzle will finally die. SD's caught on the wrong side of the tracks. This will be a dive back from him as well. That's why they just try and close the distance, laser it up, rooter him up, and no one. Too easy for him, but it's Ramsey who actually takes the double kill. That was really cool from VP. I love what Roger did there. All, all the players of VP just so skilled individually. Instead of running with his team up the high ground, he popped balls max range and then cleared out the space to the left to ensure that they had some sort of vision on the enemy high ground. Gets more of a feel for where TNC is actually playing around and then tethers to his team. And you can just see they understand their timing and how they want to win games. They, it's just the same formula. They get this Aegis, they itemize properly, and then all of a sudden, they have a ball of death. And the game's now blown wide open. Yep. They're going to just march down top. I, and I still don't know if TNC can stop them. Well, they got a little bit more time left on that Aegis, the Immortal. So yeah. while you've got that, you know you want to go. Like, wall cry it up, and uh, that's holy crap. That's so much damage on the Underlord and so much life on him. Like, they haven't even finished up the full Crimson Guard. Imagine if these guys actually have a Crimson Guard, a BKB for Ramses. Yep. It'll fly on the Courier. He won't have it for this push. But you have Aegis for another minute, so oh, as long wait, as it shows did, up Did he before actually that? just give it to the Tinker? So yeah, of course okay. he did. Yeah. That's easy, so good. Easy itemization. Easy teleport. That Courier doesn't have to do any kind of traveling. So the SD, the illusions are up. Ramses quickly kills them off. So now he can focus on the primary target. Doesn't care if he dies. In fact, he almost wants to die. Soak up abilities. Take the tower, let the Aegis Immortal pop back to full life. What do you do? T like, well, TNC! They can't initiate on this. If they do, they lose everything. The Glaives are bouncing through Armal, almost killing him down. Hey, look at that, Ramses. Now the tower's dead. He doesn't want to get disrupted, and he just keeps juking Tim's positioning. Rio also keeps getting hit by rockets. He keeps getting hit by everything else. He cannot blink in. He, they, there is no blink RP. Nope. One Aegis the Immortal, and they take the polar opposite racks, north and south. And this is just great heads-up play from VP. They recognize, look how far ahead we are. We're just going to go shove it down their throats and win this game. TNC, itemizing like this is the 2016 tanker, where games used to go 40 to 50 minutes automatically. They have a Midas on OD. They're about to buy one on the Magnus, but this game's going to be over well before the time when these, these items pay off. Yep. That's the biggest challenge of TNC. If they can hold for these items to be good, I think we're both on the same page, or we don't believe that's going to be possible, because VP are already grouping up. Ready to fight once more, they're around the mid. Looking for smoke, and uh, right now, no one's carrying any. Yep, this is the right move, At least move, not, on, not on VP side, on TNC side, they're going to three-man smoke up and wrap to mid. Maybe this is one way Rior can finally get this RP off. Well, they, they need a huge one well, on they, Tinker plus one or two. SD's going to break it on the side. He's going to break it on Io. They're coming in close. OD. Okay, Digger. Smoke behind. They realize it's broken behind them. And they do a great job. Look at the positioning, though. Look at where Wisp is. There's no way you're catching him. No one on the high ground while still smoked. Luna's hitting the tower. Underlord Sven clearing out a full 180 degree radius around them, ensuring that no wraparound is going to be possible. Look at this. It's perfect. Yep. Underlord just says, please come on me. Yep. Well, you've got the Luna. They had to wrap back around so hard for TNC to get back into the base. It's taken them so long. The Luna's already gone through. Two thirds, making three fifths of that tower. BKB's up just for safety. Fortifications buying a little bit more time for TNC and Ramses. Maybe just a little bit more cautious. Maybe not for Solo. He just goes straight in. Got a double stun out. They weren't ready to fight this one in Venus Pro. Probably the first mistake of this game three. A skewer back on Underlord gets a four-man pit. Roger wants to be here for the fight, and with the Eclipse, you're going to lose two. Make it three heroes. Io, the Glimmer Cape is protecting him. They cannot find him to kill him off. The side lanes are a very much of a mess for TNC. But Votus Pro overcommit. The Tether is down for the Io. The Orb will follow him. He'll live through it. A little sloppy. I think Solo dying in the base was just him throwing away his life for the... Glyph at that point. It's like Ramses and he were on a very different page. Yeah. It, it was just that they didn't recognize Glyph was up, because that BKB is well-timed if he can just finish the racks. But because of the Glyph, it's no longer possible, or the fortification, rather. Um, I like the play, though. I mean, you just... Your Underlord, effectively, is a club bouncer. 
keeping out anyone you don't like inside VP's, uh, you know, VP's place. Yep. And right now, they're looking to take first place in this group, and I think that as long as they don't make any egregious errors, they're going to do just that. Gabby, no BKB, he's in trouble. Yep. Tinker is just a non-stop fighter. He was looking for Tims to come close enough so he could stun to him and get the life back, but it doesn't work. 46 seconds yeah, without right. TP. Ramsey triggers the BKB. This is Megas. Nothing will stop it, and it may even just be the game. You RP over on two. The BKBs will still protect them underneath the tier four towers. Rion, he's gonna live through this, and OD, maybe now you can prove your worth. Ramsey's imprison him up. Find your target. No one, however, keeps continuously lasering the OD, so he can't get the stacks he's looking for. So they rotate back in towards the mid. There's a ball just sitting in the middle of the open for some reason. So Roger will pick it up and just bring Ramsey's and Roger up. And Pasha, they'll pull him out. They'll kill Tims, and everyone's going to leave. In fact, GG is already called. The game is done. Ah, uh, just two series, same story. VP drop game one. Uh, I'm sure Reddit and Twitch is calling them washed up, shouldn't have taken vacation, yada yada yada. Never and... judge too soon. It's like, oh my god, VP haven't won a single game in how long? Like, <laughs> like I haven't won a game in two months. Wait, you haven't played in two months? I don't care, you haven't won a game in two months. But yeah, yeah Virtus Pro, they really do look good. But their drafting style also, like, it's nice to see no one on Tinker, to mm. bring in a Luna, to have such such great uh, coordination in their draft as well as their execution. Uh, definitely a bump in the game in TNC, but uh, looking strong.